Hey everybody, it's so nice to see you. My name is Maria Kim and I have the honor of serving as President and CEO of Kara. So first let me just start by checking back in. We want to talk about how we're doing in this stage of our return to campus. So you might remember that we're using a certain framework to help guide our decisions in this process. We call it La Mama, legally allowable, medically advisable, mission advanceable. And what we mean by that is that we want to do right by the rules, right? The law. What does the state and our local leaders say as it relates to returning back to the office? Secondly, we want to make sure we do right by the health and safety of our communities. You know, what do the doctors say? What does the CDC say? We want to do right by those standards as well, of course. And third, and most importantly, we want to make decisions that advance the mission. Basically what that means is if we can still deliver mission robustly while remaining remote because that's what's safe and good for our communities, then we will choose to do so. Some of you may remember that in September we entered the small group phase of this strategy. And what we mean by small group means about 10 or so participants may be on site at any given time doing small group in-person programming. We just started it in September and it's been pretty cool to see what's happened next. So seeing folks back on campus was pretty exciting, most especially for Jesse, whom you may know is our Director of Student and Alumni Affairs and kind of chief trainer for the organization. So you get a sense of the types of things we were doing in our workshops. We did everything from, say, the power of first impressions to the power of the pause. That's an exercise we do that's kind of a, a discovery and conflict resolution and what you can do when somebody says something that might get you riled up, how do you pause and uh, take an inflection point before you make, take a next step. We also did a class on the power of connection, exploring things like love and forgiveness and what we need to do to restitch our connections with our community and our families back together. All of those things are things that he did over these last few weeks with our participants. And the thing is, everything didn't go as planned. And that's kind of the point, right? What we realize pretty soon in the process is that we're learning by doing, and that when we get back on campus, it's not gonna be the same. It's going to be different. We're gonna to have to learn in different ways. And what we realize in this time is that we distinguish between what are the musts of what we need to have happen in a class, and what are the pluses? What can we save for virtual programming and preserve the absolute must for in-person work? Now, we're, not, we're not quite there yet. We're still learning as we go but October will be our next round and we can't wait to get started. So here's the thing about the enterprise, right? It's not just like our programs that I'm so excited about. It's about our social enterprises too. And when I think about their work, I think about it through the lens of a neighborhood, a city, a suburb, states, and the whole damn country. And when I think about the neighborhood, get this, some of you may have seen that Governor Pritzker was on site in our house. The governor was in our house. It was pretty freaking huge. We were so excited to have him and have him announce a pretty big investment for our state to help communities hardest hit by COVID. And it started for us uh, as a grantee of this larger effort in a neighborhood. We have this great pleasure of partnering Kara Connects, our social enterprise as a staffing company, with Northwest Side Housing Center, a great community organization in the Belmont Cragen neighborhood. And together, through these dollars that have been invested in us by the state, through our city and county, we're creating um, and developing candidates for disaster relief jobs to help in the COVID relief effort directly in Belmont Cragen, centered in a neighborhood for a neighborhood by neighborhood residents within the community. Awesome stuff, that's the neighborhood. Then I think about the city and I think Clean Slate is crushing it. Clean Slate just secured eight new contracts in the last month. And that means that they're all over new city or new parts of our city. I asked my colleague, how many blocks do you think those eight accounts actually constitute? He goes, 760. And I think it's like somewhere like 38.5 miles of new territory that our clean slate workers are sweeping, making vibrant, making brighter, making friendlier, all, all the same. So clean slate crushing it, eight new contracts throughout the city. And then I think about the suburbs. You might remember that we endeavored into Aurora not that long ago, but sadly during the pandemic, we had to shut Aurora down. There were so many outbreaks inside the shelter system that we didn't have the candidate supply to support 
the cruise there. So Aurora was in effect closed for seven months. We just started our first crew in that time. It's pretty amazing. Aurora is now back online. And I go from Aurora and I think about, well, what's the next state for Clean Slate? And you all might have been there when we launched in Indiana this year. We just launched in Gary. Gary is already crushing it. And those jobs between the new accounts in Chicago and the, and the jobs that we created in Gary, right there, that's 50 new transitional jobs per year. Look at Clean Slate go. Love those guys. And when I think about states, eventually I think about the country. And when I think about the country, I think about this space that we're in right now, where we've got practitioners around the country that are passionate about poverty alleviation. And we also have employers who are looking in the mirror and wondering, you know, how can I become more inclusive? I want to, I have the will, I just need the way. And the cool thing is our third social enterprise, Cara Plus, which is effectively the expansion arm of, of what we do, um, they're serving both of those audiences. They just concluded a virtual practitioner institute where practitioners from our own state, also from Missouri and from Iowa and from Florida, came together to talk about what works and what doesn't and to learn together as a community. And we're hosting two institutes for employers as well to do a deeper dive on the practices that they can do in sourcing, hiring, onboarding, advancing all the things to become more inclusive employers. So check us out, carachicago.org slash employer dash institute to learn more. So now I'm thinking about the fall, right? And in the fall, we have one of our signature events. It's called Tribute to the Stars, and it kind of lives up to its name, right? It's about celebrating the stars and our alumni, folks who've been on the job for some years and can reflect on their pathway to get there, you know, what they did, how they did it, and with whom they want to celebrate. We also celebrate two big partners, both an institution and an individual, um, without whose partnership we wouldn't be where we are today. And I'm so excited that on that front, we're celebrating both Clean Slate anchor customer, Uptown United, which he, they've been with us since the beginning days of Clean Slate, and Mark Carroll, the founder of Clean Slate, who will be receiving the Thomas M. Owens Mission Award. The coolest thing about it is that we're doing this recognition in what is the 15th anniversary of Clean Slate, the scrappy social enterprise that has now blossomed into our flagship social enterprise for Kara. We're so excited to come together in this celebration, and we know that it's not going to look the same as it has in the past. This event, this event that's known for its eggs and bacon and morning motivations and all the good feels, it's going to be a little bit different, right? It's going to be a four-day virtual campaign that includes videos and testimonials where we can lift up both our alumni whose journeys inspire us every day and our social enterprise and the leaders within it without whom we wouldn't be able to kind of create the transitional jobs and the pathway to real and lasting success. Come check out this virtual campaign at carachicago.org slash tribute. Everyone can join. We'd love to see you there. And if you feel so compelled, we'd really appreciate a gift of support. One last thing I want to tell you about is a film. That film's name is The Road Up. The Road Up is this beautiful film, and it's centered on four participants of Kara. What happened is the documentarians, Siskel Jacobs Productions, came and joined our community in January of 2016. And they picked at random four Kara participants in that class. And they said, you know what we're gonna do as part of our documentary experiment? We're gonna follow the ebbs and flows and all arounds of these four people and their teacher for the months and years to come. And that's exactly what they did. And what was born out of that process was this beautiful documentary. And it's a documentary that is most definitely not a Kara commercial. It is um, kind of a discovery and an exposition and exploration of the state of urban poverty in our country. It's a really strong testament to the fact that the road out of poverty is nowhere near up. And in fact, it's up, down, and all around. And my hope is that the honesty of this story can bring us to a certain moment, particularly given where we're at in our country, that it can help us to understand the systems that create poverty, the humanity that might um, force us to perseverate in it sometimes, and the opportunity we all have as individuals, as employers, as people, as communities, 
to help be a part of the solution. It premieres at the Chicago International Film Festival. You can catch virtual tickets to screenings of the film or even join us for a drive-in on October 18th at chicagofilmfestival.com. Can't wait to see you there. So before I say goodbye, I want to recognize one big thing. The week that we're recording this is actually the week of the anniversary of Tom's passing, our founder, Tom Owens. And so we talk about him in, in the context of Mark Carroll and him re receiving the Thomas M. Owens Award. But also as I sit here in the week of the anniversary of his passing, I want to acknowledge him and the big shoulders on which we stand. And I want to thank you um, for doing what Tom has invited us to do all along, which is to be a part of this big fight to eradicate relational and financial poverty, one person, one friend, one Kara at a time. Thanks for listening. Have a great fall, and we'll see you at the road after.